Well, let's get started now that we have lots of guests. Awesome. I'm so excited to see all of these friends attending and all of these listeners. So welcome to Secession Art and Design. I am so excited to see everyone for a virtual opening. Um, it really just, it, I'm getting tears in my eyes just thinking about it that I still get to do this. I still get to curate shows and think outside the box and invite you in. Um, a year ago when, when the pandemic started, I thought that we would be one of the first businesses to close but um, because of an awesome landlord who gave us six months of rent reductions and um, grants and loans, we are we are still standing. And we, I, I, here we are tonight with an, just an incredible lineup of artists um, for this beautiful opening. So I want to introduce you to Sylvie Alcivar, Diane Hoffman and uh, J.L. King and Heather Robinson is our in-house artist, graphic designer, and also helps um, with tech with my virtual happy hours now. She has a whole new title. <laughs> so um, just to give you a little insight, this show, um, it was born on Christmas Eve, um, which I call Whiskey Eve. Um, it was over holiday and I did, because of COVID, I just had people making appointments and what that meant was people texting me, can I come in now? Can I, <laughs> or, or scheduling. And so on, on Christmas Eve, I decided I would be open for a set amount of hours. Anybody could come through. And I was so excited because my friends came through and that was Sylvie and Diane and they happened to be there at the same time. Um, while they were there, I said to Sylvie, so what are your plans for a show this year or in 2021? And she said, a show, is it going to happen? And, and I said, as long as I have the gallery, a show is going to happen. So let's figure it out. And Diane was there and I kind of planted the seed and she didn't say yes or no. And I, and a week later I contacted her and she's like, oh, I've already started the show. I've been, I've already been working on the show. You didn't have to ask me. I already knew what I was gonna do. <laughs> um, and i had been dreaming of Jen's work for a long time. It has just come up in my, consciousness and this felt like the the show that I really wanted to show her art. So welcome to Break Open. So I'm going to read you the curator statement. Secession Art and Design's new show Break Open features Sylvie Alcivar, Diane Hoffman, and J.L. King, three Bay Area artists three Bay Area women artists who communicate the unsaid through their art. This curation reflects emotion, strength, and beauty, and the hunger to create to feel human connection. Sylvie created a hundred small pieces, each with a poem carefully placed in a bottle, perfect for those in life who want some magic and healing. Diane was inspired by color and jewel tones that inform her storytelling, using found objects to create colorful windows into her imagination. J.L. King's surreal oil painting set the stage for wonder and curiosity. And yeah, I always start my show by asking each artist to share a story. So I will start with Diane. <laughs> Hello, thank you, Eden. You're very welcome. Um, yeah, no, this show is really special to me for so many reasons. Um, of course, before I worked at Artspan, I got to spend two years with Eden in the gallery as her gallery assistant. And um, so it's sort of a home away from home for me. And uh, both Sylvie and Jen are dear friends of mine that I admire immensely. And um, I'm very wowed by their art. So to be able to have this trio show together is it's like a dream team for me. 
So thanks guys. My, for anyone that's familiar with my assemblage pieces, my color palette is very different than this work. Uh, usually I'm using more mu muted colors, more um, rusty, sort of weather beaten, neutral tones, emphasize like an antique -y feel. But I noticed every once in a while, I would have just a little pop of color somewhere in a piece. And it was interesting, the reaction I would get from people, um, just almost subconsciously, they, they didn't even remark so much on that color, but I could just tell it, it brought their attention into the piece. And I thought it would be interesting to do an experiment um, using more color and to see the response. I love making art to express myself, but I also love the reaction I get from people that, um, that see it. And then uh, my dear friend, Stephen, gave me for Christmas a beautiful coffee table book of the collections of um, artist Janice Lowry. She is a an amazing assemblage and collage artist who passed away about 10 years ago. I loved her color palette in particular. I love her work um, for sure, but I really felt drawn to her color palette and it was these rich jewel tones. And I just felt this connection with it. And it got me all excited. Like all these new ideas started coming to mind. I, I was associating my connection with the color, really taking that literally and like also thinking about you know, in February, I've done in the past some um, some very literal Valentine's type series. You know, Valentine's, it really being a celebration of love, doesn't have to be exclusively between sweethearts. You know, there's love for um, your community, love for your interests, love for your pets, love for your friends, and love for yourself, for sure. And love for color, <laughs> in this case. So I just kind of took all of those, that symbolic um, ideas and brought them all together in this series. Um, that really made me think, wow, I think I got at least seven more of these in me. So let's go for it. And after I made this one, I called or texted <laughs> Eden and said, um, yes, sign me up for the, the show with Sylvie and Jen. Um, I, I want to go for it. And so then I just like locked myself in my studio and started really not knowing from one to the next what the next one was going to look like. In some cases, I started with the colors in mind first uh, for the box and then fit the pieces appropriately inside. And in other cases, I, I had the objects and I was like, oh, well, what, what color schemes are going to really highlight these particular objects? So this piece it's called Timing is Everything. This is the last piece I made in the series, knowing um, I was kind of making it as the grand finale because I just loved this parrot so much. It was gifted to me but by my friend Tori, who purchased it online. And I believe when it arrived to him in the mail, it he had lost his, his foot. He was broken. And he didn't stand up on his own anymore. So I <laughs> put up my hand. It's like, please, um, don't throw it away. I, I can bring it back to life. So he very generously donated to me. Thank you, Tori. And uh, yeah, I knew right away, like I wanted this piece to be, uh, that parrot, I should say, to be in this series because he was just so beautiful and colorful. And so I'm really excited with how that turned out. And this piece, an affectionate melody, an affectionate melody. Um, so that for me, this is like the idea that this little boy, he has an accordion and he's, um, he's playing and he's, uh, the, the music is coming through him and out through his, his mind and, you know, and it's actually becoming this affectionate roller on the, on the back of this monkey. <laughs> um, there's a lot of different symbolisms happening there. I won't, I don't want to break it all down for you. I mean, but if you've heard the term, you know, um, you're, a monkey's on your back. But this is sort of something's on the monkey's back in that case. Music is such an important aspect to my imagination process. I'm constantly listening to music and it, it takes me in a lot of different unexpected directions. This piece is called Lucid Dream. If anyone knows me outside of the art world, they know that uh, my biggest love in, in life is horses. They, often they appear in my work, um, and when they do, it's very personal. This is not an abstract piece. My, lucid, my mo most lucid dream is to um, someday have a horse in my life. I've been having the same dream since I was about two years old. Connecting with that dream and, and that love, that passion I have, this all came through in this piece. 
Um, so what, what music or podcasts were you listening to during the creation of the show? Well, I'm glad you asked. Um, well, my favorite podcast is the Drawing from Experience podcast with Shane Isaacowski. Um, I also, uh, Amanda Palmer has a new podcast, uh, The Art of Asking Everything. And I got sucked into that. I started with the first one and I just started listening to them over and over and over. It's very interesting, um, diverse uh, people that she interviews and in her um, travels all over the world. Um, and then I also, um, a friend, that I've known since um, since I was seven years old, and we grew up together. And um, when we were in junior high, we were really into the Go Go's, you know, badass women of music history. And um, the bassist Kathy Valentine had wrote a memoir called um, "All I Ever Wanted." So I listened to that through Audible while I was making these pieces as well. Normally, I listen to music um, exclusively, and I just recently I got the podcast bug. So um, I usually listen to music while I'm conceptualizing a piece. So it's more keeps my imagination more loose and fluid. And then once I'm ready to actually execute it, then I put on a podcast. And then it's like it, the talking is like keeps me company while I'm doing the busy work. So what is it like for you to have a studio during this last year of the pandemic? Um, it's a salvation for sure. It's really, uh, it's the only place I go. <laughs> um, so I, it gives me a place to go. And um, fortunately, mine is private enough. So I feel very safe. Um, but then there's still enough community here. Jen, Jen King has a studio just to hop, skip, and a jump. Uh, down the hall from mine. So I get to put on a mask and say hello to her and her family and her studio mate, Natalie Fabri. And um, so that's just nice, you know, to be, to have a, um, well, I know your next question is going to be about community. So I'll just jump right into it. Um, my, you know, my community is my art community, being a part of my community, supporting it and keeping it healthy and growing is, is really my job um, with Artspan. So I take it very to heart and um, it means everything to me. And I try to be a community leader in any way I can to, you know, uh, reach out to people who need the community and to, for them to know that we're basically power in numbers. I feel like, I think the San Francisco art community is really special and that we, it's not competitive, at least not the one I run in. And um, we really do support each other and, uh, I've made the most amazing friendships through the art community. And um, had I known that it was going to be like this, I would have um, I would have came out as an artist much sooner. As it was, I had to I had to mature a little bit. It wasn't until my mid-30s that I had the um, the courage and the confidence to proclaim myself an artist and really start showing and meeting the art community. We will move to start with Sylvie's conversation. Yeah, um, I'm just going to go ahead and read the description that I wrote for the show, considering um, I always spend time writing it. And I think some people read it, but I don't know if everyone does. And also, it just really describes the show very well. This series is a response to the pandemic, to the world ignited and up in flames and so many unanticipated and unimaginable affecting our daily well-being ways. This series is a recognition of our hearts and spirits in panic and dread, of our nervous systems in fight, flight, freeze, overwhelm, anxiety, adjusting to the continued challenge of being with the increasing loss and grief and unfolding unknown. This series is a play on the image we've all seen of the fire extinguisher or the ax that says, in case of emergency, break glass. We are in a state of emergency now, aren't we? Some of us more adapted to it and settled than others. Some of us more in need of the tools behind the glass. So this show is in recognition of all that, an invitation to being with what vulnerable and real parts of you want to be seen, held, broken open in the way Jack Hirschman means when he says broken heartedness is the beginning of all real reception or what Leonard Cohen says about the cracks being where the light gets in or what the Buddhists know about how remaining heart mind open in the face of everything is a means of coming to peace inside oneself and with the world around. 
This series is a set of instructions and affirmations, advices and insights, to do's and aspire to's, mm -hmm's and oh's. This series also contains secret messages from me to you, an intimacy between strangers, a poetry of surprise, and I hope a bit of delight. Mostly this series is an offering, a reminder that none of us are alone in our suffering, in our wanting, our needing, our being oh so human and learning how to break open. Um, and as Eden said, it was Christmas Eve and she was like, so how about a show? And I was like, uh, <laughs> and then I was like, well, actually I have these hundred little frames that I've been wanting to do something with for a very long time. And uh, as is my usual way, for those of you who know me, um, I sort of take things on en masse and I'm like, I don't have anything to say. And then I'm creating a series of 100 pieces that not only say something on the front, but also something secretly inside. Um, so it was, this is actually an idea I've had for many, many years that it, using the little bottles, which I've done in different forms, you know, some of you've gotten poetry from me, po custom poetry from me in bottles. Um, but I've been wanting to do a, a little bit more of like, um, using the, the the box piece of the shadow box to actually hold something and to actually contain something. And all these pieces sort of came together in the right way. And I was so happy when Eden told me that she was asking Diane to be part of the show. One, because I love Diane. And two, because, um, you know, it's a it's a it's definitely a nod to assemblage and um, that aesthetic, although very much in my own way. Um, yeah, and I, I also, um, because of the pandemic, it allowed me an opportunity to take a break from, which I really needed <laughs> after uh, like 12 years of writing poems for people on demand. My artist spirit has been tired from talking to so many people and writing a lot of poems. And I've been just getting back to like, what do I wanna make? What does like my poet have to say? Does, what does poet Sylvie have to say to the world without, um, you know, the input from someone else. And this allowed me the opportunity to do that. And I wanted there to be a little secret inside because it maintains the intimacy of the work for me. Usually if I'm talking to someone else, then, you know, there's an intimacy that happens between the two of us in a person telling me what their poem's gonna be about. And so um, this was like uh, somehow maintaining that for me. Um, so you get to know what's inside if you buy the piece and you don't have to break the glass and you don't have to open the little bottle. You just have to take the back of the piece off and it's written in there. Um, or if you're a patron um, until next Wednesday, I think, or whatever day the 10th is, if you're a patron, then you get access to all of the secrets. Um, even if you sign up today, you get access to the back files of that. And I also recorded all of the titles um, in case of with everything they say and then break open. And um, yeah, so if if you wanna know what all 100 of them say in a cheating kind of way, then support me on Patreon. Um, yeah, that's, that's the show. So Sylvie, I have a question for you. What pot, what music or podcast were you listening to or news, um, radio um, during the creation of the show and what time were you making the show? <laughs> Good question. So actually for the show, um, I wasn't listening to music or podcasts. I usually do. I had TV on in the background and it's too embarrassing to say what I was watching. But if somebody guesses, um, then I will give you some kind of prize. But I, I'm not going to tell you what it was. <laughs> um, and I mostly, um, no, it wasn't the Housewives of Atlanta, but good guess. <laughs> um, so I, I realized that I have a very night owl um, introverted artist sensibility and I make my best work when I work at night. So I usually showed up at the studio at like 7 p.m., sometimes nine, and then I would stay until like one or sometimes three, um, which is a funny way of working, but it works for me. And also with COVID, it kind of made it nice that uh, Maureen Shields 
who's an incredible collage artist and my studio mate, it meant that we didn't overlap in the studio. So, yeah. I, I was gonna ask, what is it like to have an art studio during a pandemic? <laughs> Um, it's been a really great way to get me out of the house. <laughs> um, and I get I can walk to my studio from where I live now pretty easily. Um, and it's like a pretty quiet, nice walk. Um, and it also it's just uh, to have a different place that you spend time in besides your house is uh, really been great. And it's actually been a little bit of socialization for me um, because I live alone. And so I would run into Maureen at the studio. Um, and that would be nice. Uh, but it's always, I mean, I've had my studio for four or five years now. And just to not have eight typewriters and hundreds of frames somewhere inside my house is like, it's a really amazing way of separating life and work. I love that. What does community mean to you? Community has been... Um, Oh my gosh, it makes me want to cry when I start talking about it. And thank you so much to all these familiar names here. I wish I could see your familiar faces. Um, I have never felt more supported in my whole entire life than I have during the pandemic. Um, people have shown up even without my asking to be supportive and um, financially as well as emotionally and artistically. And it has allowed me this deep, deep knowing that interdependence is one of the most powerfully healing forces that we can be part of. And um, I am just like, and then it just connects me to like all of the gratitude that I have for human beings being generous and beautiful and open and vulnerable. Um, so community to me means healing. Thank you, Sylvie. So I would like to introduce the beautiful JL King, Jen. <laughs> it's your turn to talk about your show. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this is my first time showing with this session. So I'm super excited to be showing in a trio here um, with Sylvie and Diane um, and uh, being with Eden. So thank you. And this is great. Um, I. I would like to talk a little bit about my work um, with how it connects with the theme of the show, Break Open. Um, it's a little different, uh, and I love this, is that Eden curated my show um, by connecting some of the works I had with the theme. So it's a little different in that I get to kind of tap into Eden and see, try to see what she saw in the pieces um, for the theme. Uh, so, and I think that break open is kind of a common thread with all of my work actually, uh, because a lot of the pieces open into other um, layers. So for this piece that is shown, it's called Splendiferous Leavings. And I think this is the seedling one. Um, you see it's breaking open into another space and then even further being broken open uh, to an empty space, a little puzzle piece. Um, this piece uh, was inspired by another piece of mine that looked like a flower, actually, uh, um, uh, a, a piece, a flower that um, was torn paper. And I wasn't meant for that, but I, that's what I saw in it. It was kind of like when you look in the clouds and you see a face. Um, or uh, some kind of um, uh, pattern. And that's what I saw in this. So I remembered that and made this piece. And uh, as with most of my pieces, wanted to draw me into another area, um, another layer. And the same with, actually this was the piece that um, inspired the, the previous piece that you just saw. Um, the snails are kind of curious with the person that's viewing it, or the big one, and uh, the other ones are kind of looking yonder to another space that looks like their home, uh, but they're resilient and making uh, uh, their place here in, in the urban city, but probably still longing for more um, nicer place to live, like a, a pasture or something like that. 
Um, this one's called Memo and um, inspired by these uh, flowers that look like fried eggs to me. And um, I think when I finished this piece, it, it turned into a piece that seemed very, very feminine to me. Um, you know, fertility and there's a little figure in the background reading a, a, a paper, a, a note. Um, and perhaps maybe even just kind of throwing them out of the window as they kind of fly around. Uh, so reading and, and um, getting the communication and then passing them out into the wind. Um, the flowers are actually uh, look like they're curious with uh, who's watching, who's looking. So I usually like to have the, the characters interact with the viewer um, almost like they're in conversation with me. So. This one, again, um, you have the little figures uh, looking in all directions. Uh, one in the middle is taking a bow. Um, the, this one's a little different. In, uh, I was, it started off with the fly, um, curtain fly. It was just a vision that I saw and I wanted to realize it on, uh, in a piece. And uh, I turned it into kind of a stage piece and um, I wanted it to open, uh, it's called Abyssidarians. And I, I got that name based on these small young beings. Uh, looks like they're, they're breaking out into the world, um, getting ready to um, move from their darkened space um, to um, explore uh, into the unknown spaces. Um, while still interacting with the viewer. Um, it's like they're taking a bow and getting ready to take their leave. So, um, yeah, that, this one is Cosmic Irony. Um, my nocturnal piece, I don't do too many night scenes. Um, but uh, in this one, I feel like the um, creatures are trying to escape from where they are and come into um, our space. Uh, I'm inspired by candies and, and um, kind of youthful uh, symbolism, uh, mostly to bring levity to pieces that seem a little darker to me. If it seems like it's giving off a, a, a darker vibe, I'll add things to it that bring levity. Um, in case it's uh, maybe the chewed piece of gum or the, the bubble gum wrapper um, brings, some, brings a, some sentiments of childhood. Um, uh, to the piece, to a darker piece. So a lot of the pieces may kind of teeter from uh, maybe a darker, um, maybe sometimes melancholic, um, but then uh, maybe disorient you to like, well, but there's a marble in there and the colors are bright and happy, that type of thing. So This um, piece is called Ascension and um, Slow Drip and this, I, I really like this piece because it, it, it um, exhibits a struggle and he looks like, you know, he's trying really hard to get to a, a heightened state, but he's just dripping and kind of slowly moving up. Um, but then if you look at the marble, it's like he has a smile on his face. Um, and that was purposefully put there to kind of show in my mind, um, uh, just, just accepting of the process, you know, things, you're going to take a struggle and things are going to be hard uh, at some points, but uh, just kind of accept the struggle and, and go with it and eventually you'll get where you need to be. Um, although not everybody gets that same vibe from this piece. Um, my husband, uh, maybe he sees a little bit of too much struggle <laughs> in his mind. Hmm. Piece, but, uh, well, I love the, the like, I love that you had squares and Sylvie squares and just there was so much play and between the three artists. Um, so I have three questions to ask you that I asked Sylvie and um, and one of them is specific to your art. So this I would have never thought in a million years we would all be wearing masks <laughs> in this way. Um, and now it's becoming this kind of artistic um, expression. Uh, so when I was thinking about your show, I was really like your pieces with not 
like with having the marbles over the head, like they just reminded me so much of this time that we're living through. And I also feel like your pieces through the years have really haunted me, like they come up in my dreams. So I just, um, I don't know if you could speak to just the time we're living in the mass and maybe if that's have any influences. The marble. Yeah. Um, the, the heads being not showing faces are for anonymity. And I, I, if you think about now, it's, it's like we're all kind of walking around anonymous. I barely recognize people sometimes that I know and have seen their faces over and over again. Um, when they're wearing these masks and uh, um, when I pick choose certain heads for my pieces I choose them in order to bring a, a certain vibe again the levity so the marble in this piece I think brings um, a brighter space a bri brighter element to the piece that might be a little darker um, youthfulness I mean I step on marbles all the time in my own house I have a lot of kids so, uh, you know, some of the, the childhood things that you see in my pieces are um, influenced by my own, I think my own youthfulness that I, I hold all the time because I have young children. So, um, uh, so what music or podcast were you listening to during the creation of um, these pieces? I know these pieces weren't all created at the same time. So whatever you come I up with. Listen I became a, actually became a, a, a news junkie for the past few years um, and it got worse and worse. So I was really listening to the news a lot. Um, but when I broke away from that, I'd listen to um, podcasts. I like storytelling podcasts a lot. Um, you know, the creepy ones are always fun. Um, like, uh, what is that? Spooked, um, Snap Judgment. Uh, I like the music that I listen to, I listen to a, a lot of different ones. So I was listening to um, like oldies. I listen to a lot of oldies, like 50s and 60s and um, soul bossa nova music and 90s r and I like it. Punk. I mean, I listen, I have quite a, an eclectic mix. I like it. I'm not sure that they actually in influence my work though. <laughs> they might, because, but I, I listen to them all at different times, yeah. What is it like having an art studio during a pandemic? Uh, great. Um, I, I'm, I'm there a lot. I was there a lot. Uh, it was a little different in that my family was there more frequently there than um, during the pandemic because they were home. So, and I still wanted to get to work and get to the studio. So while I was working, they would accompany me a lot to the studio. Yeah. How many children? I have four. Okay. We are my natural children and all three of them would come with me to the studio and hang out there and they're pretty good. You know, they have toys there. They have, you know, the iPads and I have an older kid. She would do her um, college work there. She still comes. So it's uh, been a good, I mean, they keep me company because it has been pretty lonely during the studio and in, in the community that I'm in, um, ARC, there wasn't a lot of people there in the very beginning. Um, so I felt like I was there alone a lot. What does community mean to you? Um, Sylvie's definition is a hard one to uh, follow. Um, community mean, means uh, friends and family um, and support uh, during the, the, the tougher times. Um, and the ones that you know are, are there for you during those times. Um, you just really know during the hard, during, during your tougher times when you really need that um, support, you know exactly who are the ones that are a part of your closest community. Great. Well, thank you all for being part of this show and thank you everyone who is here. Um, so I just want to say that there's lots of different ways that you can support these artists. You can, you can go onto our website. Um, we've tried to really adapt to this whole virtual model and make it really, really easy for you to shop their collection. Um, we'll share the screen. Um, and the best way that you can support our gallery right now is to buy art. Um, this is 
this is the only way that we are going to exist in the future. Um, and I'm so honored to be able to curate these shows and, and bring these pieces into your home. Um, if you wanna see, see these pieces in person, I am doing appointments. Um, so you can hop onto our appointment and do a 30 minute private appointment. Um, if you don't live in town, you can do a virtual appointment with me. Thanks everyone so much for being here. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you. So I look forward to seeing everyone popping by the gallery or popping online and buying some art. Um, I'm, I'm a curator and an owner that is always available. So if you have a question, call me or email me. And yeah, let, let's do this. Let's keep having art shows and, and supporting each other because that's the most important thing. Thank yeah, you. Absolutely. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. Night night. Night night. <laughs>